tune beyond measure. And now, to add fuel to the fire, we find out she's tried to record the president of the United States on a private phone call. I'm not going to talk about what they talked about on the phone. What I can tell you is the thought of doing right. something like that to a fellow employee, not to mention the leader of the free world, is completely disgraceful. Okay. One thing that they had a conversation with, uh, the general was saying to her, you have basically ethic, uh, eth ethic, ethical violations. What are those ethical violations? Why was she fired? Well, I can't get into uh, the specificity on personnel moves, but listen, the press have reported repeatedly on what she did and didn't do within this White House. You guys know some anchors on network television mocked and derided <laughs> Amorosa to her face. I can't tell you the conversations I've had with reporters who come into my office and mocked her behind her back. So it's kind of funny now when they didn't want her on television, gave her no credence or credibility when she worked here. Now that she's turned on Donald Trump, she's the toast of the town. They're giving her time. They're giving her uh, the ability to go out and try and tell a story that is fake, that is not true, and that is full of holes and full of lies. And quite frankly, the media have some, have some uh, uh, burden to bear here because they're the ones who completely dismissed her for the entire time she was here. Well, uh, you know, she, pl she played a tape of the president the next day after she got fired. The president called her, and she also, that's the, the recording that she had with the president. And he said, what's going on? I didn't even know you were fired. And she's trying to say the president do doesn't know what's happening in the White House. Meanwhile, others have said that the chief of staff, that's his job. To, he, he went in there and he cleaned house, and he was trying to clean up the White House. What was she really like to work with? What was her personality like, and what did people think of her inside the White House? Look, I always got along with Amorosa. Uh, she was someone that would come to my office periodically and we'd have conversations and meetings. I didn't see her in too many of the meetings we had with other staff uh, when we had planning meetings and things like that. I got along with her. But this is someone now that makes me concerned. I wonder if she's recording some of the things we talked about as well. You can't trust somebody who comes into your office and smiles and has a conversation and then you find out afterwards right. they leave and they're private citizens. They've been recording this information. The conversations she had with the president, the conversations that I have the president gotcha, the conversations okay. at Kelly they're all private that's ridiculous that you would right, release but, those but, but is it true or false the press was the president telling the truth and he said he didn't even know she was fired that Kelly fired her without telling the president Listen, the president makes the decisions in this White House. I'm not going to get into the TikTok of, of who knew what and when. What I can tell you is the president and Omarosa had a 15-year relationship dating way back to the reality show The Apprentice. The president trusted her and gave his uh, support for her, brought her into the White House to a prominent position, uh, and she's abused that privilege. And, and that's something that, that, that that's, just, that's just horrible. And I think most Americans look at that and say, someone gave you the trust level to come into the White House, work for the administration, Administration, try and make the mm -hmm. America a better place for the American people, and you just completely blew past that, ignored that for your own self-serving interests. It's a, it's a horrible thing. All right. Uh, speaking of trust, Hogan, there are a number of Republicans who do not trust the Department of Justice and the FBI because they have been asking for documents that would explain the very origins of the Russia collusion investigation because it looks like, you know, this guy, Bruce Orr, the number four guy at the Department of Justice, he was getting stuff from his wife who worked for Fusion GP. Yes, and he was putting it into the bloodstream of the FBI, even though Christopher Steele had been fired for leaking to the press. So the big question is, will the president declassify these things that all these Republicans are calling for and have been for half a year? It seems like with every day and every new revelation, the president has proven to be more correct than he was the day before. At the highest levels in the FBI, you've seen bias against Donald Trump and bias for Hillary Clinton. That is something that's unacceptable. The president is a supporter uh, unequivocally of all of the rank and file members of the FBI. He wants transparency throughout the process. Congress uh, uh, has been asking for these documents. He wants cooperation. Hogan Gidley, thanks so much. Thank the tapes of, vindicate him. Right. Speaking of tapes, Amorosa recorded that conversation with Chief of Staff John Kelly. And um, you know, it was a private situation. He fires her. She records it. And now she releases the tapes. Is she breaking the law by doing that? In the that? situation room. Uh, she's certainly violating national security regulations, which I think have the force of law. Uh, yeah, I would think she is. I mean, I have to look at it more carefully. And, and, and is, she, is she violating every, uh, every, every bit of trust in, uh, that she... Uh, people should have in someone. I mean, Donald Trump made her. I mean, how, what, what kind of ingratitude is this? Even, uh, and you can tell from the tape, he thought she resigned. 
Yeah, that, and, that's and, and, and John Kelly fired it. Right. Well, that, that, look, I was the chief of staff and deputy attorney general. I would often fire people who, that had to be fired. Right. And, the, the Today Show just released tapes that shows that he recorded, she recorded the president as well. Calling her the next day and saying, what's going on, Omarosa? I didn't know you I were didn't leaving. Know you were yeah, leaving. I heard a little of that tape. Uh, sounds per perfectly natural in a, in, in a situation like where he thought she was going to re she, she was resigning. He wasn't even happy about that. M most of the things about her never came to him. He, the pre they don't walk in and say to the president, I'm not just saying, I'm wrote, but, uh, you know, so-and-so leaked something or so-and-so is fighting with this one on the wife. If he did that, the president couldn't do his job. Uh, that, that, that's for the chief of staff to handle. And for, for her to say that Kelly pressured her, he said to her, it's non-negotiable. That's not pressuring. This is, this is a Marine Corps general. You're fired. I mean, what, you know, he's not, not exactly going to have a bedside manner. I, uh, and I, Kelly, I think Kelly probably does. But he, she, she had to be fired. She was fired. That was it. They never put anything bad about her. They never attacked her. Because he was talking on the tape that they played yesterday about uh, ethical violations regarding vehicles, maybe money as well. But he didn't want to go into the specifics because they, we have these lawyers right here who are going to, who are going to fix this. Well, and, and none of that came out. None of that. I mean, if, if Kelly wanted to hurt her uh, or anybody around the chief wanted to hurt her, it, it would have been in the, in, in the Washington Post the next day. She's misusing this. She's misusing that. She's, her accounts aren't in order. Everybody in the White House thinks she's a backstabber. That, a little of that did come out, that last part. But, you know, so what? Uh, Mr. Mayor, how would, you give the, how would you characterize the president's mindset this weekend? You with the oh, president weekend? played golf great yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> and then he watched, uh, he watched most of the end of the, of the PGA, and he was in rare form. He was, um, he was entertaining all of his friends, uh, made a bunch of calls there, thanking people for their support. Uh, it, was, uh, it was Donald Trump, you know, in campaign mode. Uh, getting ready for uh, for November and uh, starting to feel pretty good about what well, he's won nine out of ten races with all this garbage going on around him. I, I think we have them on the run. I think he's he's happy that we're calling for an investigation of of Mueller and and uh, and Comey. And you're waiting for Co and you're waiting for Mueller to get back think, to you. And I think that's one of the reasons why he he, he put put up that tweet on Sessions, trying to wake him up. Mm -hmm. Come on. Let's start being an attorney general here. Let's, let's be equal. You've been investigating us forever. No evidence. How about we take a look at where there's a, lot, a big pile of evidence? Yeah. And, well, uh, and, and when you talk to the president, do you, do you call the president sessions? Do you call the attorney general? No. no. He, he, he's recused. Mm -hmm. No. Uh, we, we would commu we'll, we'll communicate to Mueller, which usually means Jane Raskin with Jim Quarles. Uh, if we went to Rosenstein, that would be the person he would appeal to. And probably at the end, we'd ask for a meeting with him. Sure. Uh, he, he's, the, he's actually the decision maker. Uh, he writes the report. Mueller does. But then Rosenstein decides what to do. Because he's his boss. All right. Mm -hmm. Still lots more work to do. Okay. Rudy, thank you very much for joining <laughs> so us. Much for being here. Should be a big week. Should be. I hope so. I think this is the week, I think. All right. Really? For what? I think, I think he'll give us a decision this week on our counterproposal. It's, it, we, we're coming down to his looking really bad by interfering in the election. And I think he's got to get it over with by the, by the beginning or early September. All right. Stay tuned. Okay. Thank All you, Rudy. Thank you. This is the actual last full day of the president's working vacation at his Trump National Golf Club in nearby Bedminster. And he did some tweeting this morning uh, about the economy, about the Mueller probe, uh, about Harley Davidson. But as you mentioned, the big topic on the Sunday morning shows today was and is Omarosa, the former White House aide and reality star hired and fired by Mr. Trump uh, for both The Apprentice and also his administration has now written a book that's highly critical of the man she used to defend and call a friend. She's now telling anyone who will listen that the president is a racist and a misogynist. This morning on Meet the Press, Omarosa defended the revelation that she secretly recorded numerous meetings inside the White House including a sit-down in the Situation Room where Chief of Staff John Kelly informed her that she was done. As you'll How see, in you Unhinged, I protected myself because this is a White House where everybody lies. The president lies to the American people. Sarah Huckabee stands in front of the country and lies every single day. You have to have your own back because otherwise you'll look back and you'll see 17 you know knives in your back. Well, this morning on Fox News Sunday, counselor to the president, Kellyanne Conway, questioned Omarosa's motives.
Whether it's 30 pieces of silver or a seven-figure book advance for you, your publicist, your ghostwriters, and others, all that's changed was this book deal and her being fired. So I think he probably feels very betrayed. And in case you missed it, the president was asked about Omarosa during a photo op with Bikers for Trump yesterday at Bedminster. Do you feel betrayed by Omarosa, sir? Low life. She's a low life. There are no public events scheduled today for and with the president at Bedminster. Tomorrow he has an event uh, at Fort Drum before he heads back to the White House tomorrow night, Leland. All right, Rick Leventhal in New Jersey. Great work the past week or so with the president on vacation. Rick, thank you. Here to weigh in our talk radio panel, Chip Franklin joining us from San Diego, Steve Dacey in Iowa. Uh, Chip, start with you. Uh, any of these Omarosa claims mean anything, or is this going to be something that's uh, heard and forgotten over the next 24, 48 hours? Well, let me ask you, do you really care? I mean, I, look, if he said I mean, I, I'm she asking said, you, do you, I mean, do you, does anybody really care? Well, I mean, look, the, this president's on record for saying some things that just have both sides shaking their heads, you know, right, right down to the head of the Republican Party. Uh, this is just another thing. If he said the N-word and, you know, supposedly Tom Arnold had that on tape, I don't think it would affect his base. That's sad, but that seems to be the case. All right, Steve, uh, you in the same boat on that? You know, I think there's so many of these. We'll be talking about somebody else next week, the week after. Um, that I do think after a while it just becomes white noise and opinions about what you think of the president's character are pretty much cemented on one side or the other. I think a lot of Americans probably, regardless of how you're going to vote this November or voted last November, probably want to know why in the Sam Hill somebody like this was ever allowed intimate access mm. to the White House to begin with. Raise your hand. Anybody talking? in America watching us right now, ra right. raise Can your I ask hand. A question? Can I ask a question? Sure. Are you talking about Trump or Amorosa? I'm talking about Trump. Who's allowed yeah. in the White House, I'm, right? I'm, yeah. I'm, talking, I'm talking about Trump allowing Omarosa into the White House. I mean, yeah, I, know, I, don't, I, know. I can't I imagine being... there's, I can't imagine well, there's well, any carbon-based white Steve, form Steve, in America in the... shocked it turned out like this. We had a Trump surrogate on yesterday, Steve, and, and they sort of tried to weave this narrative that this is the ultimate defense of the president who, if he is going to be called a racist, as Omarosa has sort of tried to ignite that and stir that pot, they said, wait, how can somebody be a racist if they've brought in somebody uh, who's black, African-American, as Amorosa is, into the White House, into the inner circle, and given her a chance. See, I think these kinds of arguments, I, I don't think they work for our side. And the reason why is because, you know, the other side likes to point out how much of the black vote they get, and then we point out, right. you know, black unemployment doesn't do any better no matter how much Democrats win, right? So, to me, I, I think this sort of tokenism argument is a bad argument. Hmm. I think the president should instead, you know, just be a good president. Reevaluate the people you hire. Stay, get, you know, stop putting Rudy Giuliani oh. to do Democrat get out the vote efforts on television. Stick to talking about his accomplishments. Well, I, let his let his allies in the you, media if attack more. If you, if you if you watched Kellyanne Conway, who they put out this morning to try and and combat the Omarosa uh, claims, that was really uh, a page out of your playbook, uh, Steve, in terms of how she. Uh, looked at things. Move on to sort of the other big issue. Brought up Rudy Giuliani, who's made the rounds uh, today as well, including on Media Buzz. Uh, this is the president's tweet this morning, quoting Judge Janine from last night. Bob Mueller, isn't your whole investigation premised on a fake dossier paid for by Hillary, created by a man who hates Donald Trump and used to con a FISA court? Judge uh, Bob, I really think it's time for you to give up your phony investigation. No collusion, exclamation point. Uh, Steve, to well, you, uh, we, we heard uh, Rudy Giuliani out there again today talking about how Mueller has to wrap up his investigation by September, et cetera. Is that the vein that you're okay with, or you think that that's a mistake as well? I think everybody that's going to vote on this, that Trump won because of a Russian collusion plot their minds are already made up. This hmm. issue is a point of diminishing returns for the White House. Have your allies like Judge Deneen in the media. Have them do this for you. Stay away from it. Be the president of the United States. Talk about things Wait. the vast majority of, play, of people in places like right, Iowa Chip, or Chip, I, I, I'm I'm give, actually well, care about. Chip, I'm going to give well, you the, the last well, 30 the, seconds. With apologies to Fox, why are we quoting a talk show host about this economy? Why are we talking about the, why aren't we talking about the border wall? Why aren't we talking about 
uh, the economy that uh, Trump, the 3.9 unemployment, it looks great, but he's constantly going after Jerome Powell, head of the Fed. And we all know that uh, higher, uh, lower unemployment means higher inflation, and that, that's bad for Americans. That's what we should be talking about, mm. not what Judge Jeannie or uh, Hannity or anybody else on your network is talking about. This is the guy we need to focus on and what he's doing, not what he's saying, but what he's doing. This is good for mm. Wall Street, but it's bad for Americans. Well, we, we, that is an argument uh, that the American people tend to decide at the polls. They, uh, they do vote with their pocketbooks. But, it's something everybody understands. Gentlemen, but this isn't fake news. It. We, we have I'm statistics. Up, I'm, I'm up against. Yep.